What's up everyone? It's 97 degrees, I'm sweating like crazy, but it's three, two something in the afternoon and I rushed home uh, from the office today to wash the S2000 because somebody's coming to look at it. And so I really didn't want to make a video today. I've been making tons of videos. I got lots to edit and, and, and to put up with the, the new CR that I bought. Uh, but I wanted to give you guys the story. I, I haven't, I never, I didn't really do a very good job of explaining, you know, the whole selling the silver one, getting the the black one, and so I'm gonna I'm gonna talk you through that story here today. But one really cool thing just showed up overnight from the rag company. Uh, this is a this is a Matt Mormon special here. I begged them to make this thing. I've also, um, you know, uh, the, the microfiber madness is also making one. Uh, but again, everybody tends to make these pads smaller, uh, and I wanted a big, plush. Notice this thing is pretty, pretty thick. You know, if we compare it to, you know, one of my one of my issues with the you know the microfiber madness, their pad was it's too small. So just to give you an idea, size difference, and I and I know why they made this. Because there was a specific reason behind this. You know, the reasoning was is so that you could keep it in your hand, not rub it on the ground. Um, so, you know, this has a purpose. Lots of people like this, but I like a bigger pad. So this is a, you know, this was me saying, hey, I, I think I think I've transitioned to the idea of using a microfiber version of the pad versus the synthet synthetic wool just because of the, you know, the lack of it picking up stuff. Uh, and, um, but this is a 10 by 10, version from the rag company and then I asked them to make it thick you know because that you know this this is much thinner I don't know if you can see you know how much you can see the difference between the two in thickness you know versus say uh, then like a normal wash pad so this is their cyclone wash pad or I'm sorry wash mitt so notice the thickness difference I wanted it to be like you know like an Adams mitt uh, so we'll see how this does, how this contours. The sponge in the middle feels really substantial. My fear, and I'm waiting for the microfiber madness version to come out, but my fear is they're not going to make it thick enough. You know, they tend to like, you know, at least from my experience of their products, they tend to prefer, you know, a certain style, which is, you know, that's fine because they're appealing to what most of their customers want. But I want it different. I want it to be more substantial. So we'll see how this does with soap. I'm going to go back. I'm going to use Adam's Adam's car shampoo and we're going to wash the S2000. I'm going to talk you through what the heck's going on with that. So the S2000, I don't need nearly as much soap as I've been using. So the last several washes I've done have been with the car with the what is it? The um, Optimum soap. So I'm going to use Adams, go back to my old trusty Adams, because I'm pretty sure I still like this much better. And we're going to use the new pad. So we've got, yeah, do uh, about 100 mLs. Some people have been complaining about their bottles being stripped right out of the box, which I, I find suspect. You just have to be gentle with it, you know, this you're screwing plastic in the metal. I find it, you know, find it hard to believe that it's stripped right out of the box, but you know, maybe I guess it's possible. Uh, so uh, let's get uh, let's get the car rinsed. All right, I finally have some of these guns in stock. So if you want one, better get it. I don't have a lot of them, but I've got some. Yeah, the guns are in stock, but the wands are now. I don't have nearly as many wands as I do guns. The car's not super dirty, but I did drive it. So, here's what happened with the S2000. And I'm not gonna, I'm gonna tell you exactly from start to finish, the whole story. I'm not making anything up. I'm not doing this for subscribers. I'm not doing this to try to be cool or whatever you want to say. I'm just doing it because this is what I want to do. Let's foam it and then we'll, we'll talk about the story here. So the S2000, I only need like half a bottle. Hip that.
half of a half of a bottle is all I needed. All right, so here's how this went down. You know, I bought the new headlights because when I took the, the when I took the, the crappy Lamex tinted film or whatever that went on the headlights, when I took that off, you know, it delaminated the lights. We had stress fractures and issues in the lights, so I bought the new lights. Started to put those on. Did the did the install on those. Removed the bumper. Bumper, you know, the bumper. I, and I kind of assumed this would happen, but the bumper. In my first crack at aligning it, the bumper wasn't aligned, and I'm like, you know what? I don't want to freaking deal with this. And and so, you know, I had all the parts. So so here's here's what was my plan was to get all the cosmetic stuff sort of dialed in, get the floor mats and interior and all that stuff worked out. And then I would do the you know I would do the install and the exhaust and the suspension and do all that stuff myself. Get that all get that all dialed in. So put the frame braces, the suspension on the. You know, and then, and then, uh, and then my next step was to then do a supercharger. So that would be, you know, several months from now, as I made videos of the install process and played with it and figured out, you know, which frame braces that I want, that I get all the right ones, get all the, you know, all that stuff dialed in, go get the alignment done, and all that set up. So that that was the plan. But when I removed the headlights. You know, the, the bumper not aligning, I started to think, you know, I really don't want to be pulling this bumper on again, off again. I don't like lining up stuff like that. It's not fun to me. So why don't I just call LHT Performance down in, down in St. Pete. They're like an hour and 45 minutes, two hours from me. Why don't I just call them? Let's just do the supercharger now. I want it, so let's just get it done. Let's move this over. I really hate how the light in here makes the video. The video just never looks as crisp because the lighting outside is so much brighter. As bright as these lights are, it's not as bright as it is outside. Holy moly, that holds tons of water. Hmm. I don't know about this. This is really freaking heavy. Sorry, this is throwing me off. So I called John LHT. They have a YouTube channel, and I've done you know thirty something installs on on the Kraftwerk supercharger, which I determined is the supercharger I wanted. Main reason for that, you know, it makes you know four hundred reliable horsepower, 400 wheel horsepower, or, you know, or slightly more than that, versus the CT engineerings and some of the other kits that really aren't as heavily subscribed to. You know, they've just, they've, they've done more of them. More of them are on cars, and so I made the decision I wanted to do that kit. It just so happens that LHT is probably installed more than anyone. They have a, their own little system on how to do it. And so, I mean, changing oil pumps, and, or uh, not oil pumps, fuel pumps and injectors is just something I'm not really interested in doing. And so I called them up, scheduled the appointment for this past Monday. So while we're playing here, let's, let's compare that to the Cyclone, so this is the wash mitt. Dang it. So I booked the appointment to get this car supercharged and I figured, you know, we'll make videos and I can kind of help out on the install process. Let's just do all the parts. Let's just do the whole thing all at once. Exhaust, suspension, supercharger, let's get it all. I'll call, I'm calling it sort of phase one. Let's get our phase one install done. So I, I made that appointment, you know, right after I did the headlights. So what was that? That was four weeks ago. And so we got on the schedule to make some collaborative videos. We'll do the supercharger and all the other parts. Well, about two weeks ago, 
John posts a video of a black CR. And of course I watched it about four times and I'm like, you know, that's really interesting. I really wanted a CR when I was looking for this. But you know, when I originally started out, you know, I didn't want to, I didn't want to pony up that much cash because you know, CRs are going for 40 or 45 grand. And even then, you know, to find one is nearly impossible. Let me set the drag on the wheel here a little bit. And so that, so I think he put the video up on like Friday or maybe Saturday that it's for sale. 11,000 miles, black, club racer edition. We'll talk about what that means here in a minute. And so I told him, look, I'm thinking about selling my silver in favor of that. What do you think? And so he said, Matt, I want this car, but I just bought a Corvette that I've always wanted. So I'm just not in a position to do it. This car is perfect. You know, it's the car that I want to buy and I see these come through here all the time. And so I thought about it for a day. He got, you know, dozens and dozens. Now he didn't put the price in the video. Dozens and dozens of inquiries because everybody probably thought they could get it for nothing for 20 grand or 15 grand or something stupid. I knew what it was going to cost. And so I decided, you know, I paid 25,500 for this car do with the sponge oh. what three weeks ago and so they were asking 40 grand which I think was a reasonable price for that car so it's 15 grand more 14 five more than this thing and so then I had to think through decision wise you know did I want to spend the extra money because I didn't want to spend that 40 grand at the time on an S2000 but I really don't think this car's gonna lose value. Now, the problem is it's black. The other problem is, you know, I'm taking a CR, which you should probably leave as my last dunk in the bucket. So I don't need to use the rinse. I'm gonna be modifying the heck out of this thing. So do I really want a CR for that? And I came to the conclusion that you know what, I can't, even if I do modify it. I mean, the car cost 37.5 10 years ago. This thing has 11,000 miles on it. It's gonna be, they only made 699 of them. Even though it's black, you know, this version is gonna be really hard to find one this clean without paying, you know, 65 grand for it. So I decided to pull the trigger. And so, we decided to just leave. So I got the deal done. So that was Tuesday. I decided to buy it, wired the money, got the title. And so I was owned the car so that Monday the 19th, this past Monday, I could go down and pick up the car. And so this car is for sale. The reason I'm rushing home to wash it right now is because somebody's coming to look at it. I haven't even listed it yet. I think I've had two dozen inquiries about it. Um, I'll probably sell it for, I don't know, 20, I'll probably sell it for 25.5 or 26. And I'm asking 26 for it just because I spent a thousand bucks on the headlights, you know, a couple hundred bucks on the um, you know, on the floor mat, you know, 150 bucks on the shift knob, you know, put some some you know some time and effort into the car. So um, you know, I think it's it's probably worth more than what I paid for it. Uh, but you know, if I get my money back, that's fine. So again, I paid 40 grand for the for the the CR. Yeah, I'm supercharging it. Yes, I'm doing exhaust and everything on it. So. Uh, I know I released the video of day one at LHT, but I'll, I'll edit this video today and put it up just so that I can explain to you all what, you know, what, what the thought process is. So this is my, so let's just do a really quick wheel cleaning. 
and I was going to do a, a quick rinseless wash or yeah rinseless wash a quick O and R wash but I wanted to test out that new pad so the car isn't super dirty but I did drive it in some some drizzling rain dang the camera has a hard time during the day out here Need to figure that out so the buckets launch they're gonna be I got all the final pricing of assembly shipping is you know somewhere between 35 and 60 dollars so I just built in a flat shipping price of 40 so you know, if you're in the if you're in Seattle you're getting a little bit of a shipping deal if you're in you know if you're in Ohio you're gonna get screwed a little bit because you know or Pennsylvania but they're gonna drop ship directly from grit guard and I have about 50 sets so I have enough I have enough product for about 50 sets of them so they, they should go out here you know they'll ship pretty quickly so if you're in the market for buckets or have been waiting on it or you're just waiting to yell at me about it being $345 uh, I built in, a, you know, I'm, I think the, the, the final operating cost, you know, after, after all said and done, I think I'll make about 31 points, you know, 31% margin on it. So, you know, I'm not making a fortune. And so if you, you know, you pull the shipping out, um, you're talking about 120 bucks in profit, something like that. So uh, th this is just what the products cost. So people are going to lose their freaking minds about this, but I don't care because I know that there are people who are just like me who have a brain and know what things cost. And it's, you know, these buckets aren't for normal people. These aren't for people who accept, who, who don't care or don't value a bucket. I do. I know many other people do. I know that you, I know what you'd have to do to go and buy these, and this is what it would cost you. Maybe you'd save, you know, 30 bucks trying to buy it all, but then that would get eaten up by shipping because you're going to have to ship it from four, you know, four different places. So anyway, the buckets are going live on, I think, Saturday evening is when I've decided to launch them, giving Gritcard a little bit more time to, to, get it, get, to get it done. All right, so let's rinse the car off. We'll clean out the buckets. So that's what happened with the S2000. And why I got a CR. So I should pick it up probably maybe tomorrow or Monday, you know, whenever they're done. The tow to exhaust didn't fit. Can't even believe it. Like it wasn't even close. The design, I don't know if they if they've routed all shipping operations off to China or Taiwan or something like that. But the, the really disappointing part, part is that they, the thing didn't fit. Like the whole thing, the whole rear section is off. The whole um, mid pipe doesn't, doesn't clear anything. You know, it sits on the frame. It's just a bad design. So we're we're cutting the tote exhaust and making it our own. Because I really wanted that exhaust. So I'm about to take a two thousand dollar tote exhaust and chop it up. But you know, I bought it direct from Japan because I couldn't get the US people to do anything about it to get it to me. And so I'm kind of in a tough spot trying to deal with Japan. But man. It's really sad, you know, because I was really digging the Silverstone. The thing looks great. The bumper's aligned. I do have a little chip right here. There's another very similar chip on the other side. There's that little bit of clear coat. There's a little clear coat blemish on that side right here. And the hardtop isn't perfect, but it's, you know, it, it, it probably needs, there's some black overspray here. They just clearly, they just taped it off. They didn't pull it. A window out or take it apart so when, he, when he painted it but man this car is a, a great example you know I had fully intended to keep this thing forever 
it's a great example of a you know what a a decent you know S2000 or really you know better than decent S2000 would look like. So I'm sure it'll sell pretty quickly if I don't sell it here today. Let's do some hides. So freaking humid. So I'm gonna dry off the car and show it here to the, the guy that comes by at around three o'clock. Anyway, I'm excited about the CR. I think it's going to be a great example of a car. You know, my standard of a car. We'll see how I do with the black. I, I might, we'll see. I'll probably end up just clear filming or wrapping the whole thing. As much as I hate clear film, um, you know, it's probably a better alternative than that, that black paint is going to scratch, especially every time we wash it. So it'll be make for some interesting videos of me ranting about black, but. Uh, you know, it's, it's, it's car number, it's CR car number 62. It has, you know, 10,800 miles on it. Uh, now I have a brand new, super reliable graphic supercharger, clutch masters exhaust, lightweight flywheel. Uh, I've got, uh, you know, Toto, I'll have the Toto header, Toto test pipe, Toto exhaust. Uh, we'll figure out, you know, the car dynoed at 205, 144, you know, 144 foot pounds of torque to the wheels on the, on the dyno at LHT stock, so we should pick up you know 200 horsepower, 100 plus you know foot pounds of torque uh, on the car. So it's going to be a great car. It has uh, RE71Rs on it now. I'll probably do Cup twos. So phase one is all the stuff they're doing now with the suspension and the uh, the Olin suspension, the roll center adjusters, the sway bar end link upgrade, uh, the axle shafts or half shaft spacer, spacers. Uh, the you know the Kraftwerk supercharger, the Clutch Masters clutch, so all that stuff will be done here, uh, and then and then you know exhaust header, test pipe, and so then phase two will be wheels, brakes. Uh, I'll decide what I'm going to do with that. Whether I do a big brake kit and deal with a goofy offset in the front, or if I just say screw that, just do stainless lines, better rotors, better pads, and stick with the stock calipers. Uh, that that's you know something I you know I'll, I'll have to make a consideration on, uh, and then you know if I do decide to do a square setup, I'll have to do a bigger sway bar in order to compensate for that to keep the same you know similar feel. Uh, but anyway, uh, the S2000 is going to be a really cool project. I'm going to do some drying comparison videos. I hope to get the car back to do some comparison of stock versus modified. We'll see. Uh, but uh, but anyway, if you're interested in this car, hit me up. You know, 26 grand, 25.5. Um, and uh, we can ship it anywhere easily. It cost me 825 bucks to ship it from South Carolina, so um, sure, and it came in like a day, perfectly unscathed. So, anyway, thanks for watching this stuff. Thanks for allowing me to do this. And uh, if you don't like S2000s, uh, well, tough luck. I'm going to make some videos of whatever's going on in my garage. Uh, these, I think the car's cool. I'm just, you know, again, I'm I'm just sharing my life on video sharing what's going on in my garage, tools, garages, garage design. I'm going to build a garage out here someday. Uh, um, and, and that's just kind of what I'm doing. I'm, notice how I don't, I don't really worry about releasing videos daily. I just kind of do it whenever I need to do it. Whenever it's done, whenever I have time to edit, I just put them out. Uh, I think you guys are smart enough for me to not have to dictate you know, exactly when the videos are coming out. I think you're smart enough to go and watch the videos whenever you want to watch the videos. Um, so I'm going to release them when I can, not, not playing any game. So anyway, thanks for watching, and uh, stay tuned for more crazy. Appreciate it. So what happens when the, when the force pulls you back, your foot naturally comes off the gas. You have to keep your foot to the floor. The floor. The floor.